What's up everybody, this is the Act Man here, and today we're going to talk about Battlefield 5. Now, the trailer has garnered a lot of controversy since it came out. The likes and dislikes are sitting at a bizarre ratio of about 40% likes and 60% dislikes. Now, why is that, you might ask? This isn't infinite warfare. Going back to World War II isn't supposed to be a largely questionable move for Battlefield. I don't think Battlefield fans are opposed to going back to that era, so what's the deal? Why are people upset with Battlefield 5? I think I have the answers, or at least some of them, and I wanted to talk about them because this has been such a highly requested video for me to do. Okay. Now just so you know where I stand with the franchise, I'm not the biggest fan of Battlefield. For a while I was just a casual player who enjoyed the games from time to time, and then Battlefield 1 came out, and I found myself absolutely loving it, absolutely hooked. It's fine if you didn't like Battlefield 1, that's not the point. I'm just letting you know where I stand with the series. Now I'm kind of at the point where I'm deciding if Battlefield is something I really want to get into. Battlefield 5 is that turning point for me. Will this become one of my go-to franchises? And just like Black Ops 4, for clarification's sake, we don't know too much about the gameplay and how it's actually going to turn out. And trust me, I really do hope the game turns out good. Now personally, I wasn't too butthurt over the trailer. I kind of shrugged it off, again, because I'm not necessarily a hardcore fan. But I think what I can do is describe and talk about how gamers and perhaps some of the hardcore fans feel about it, and maybe can't describe it themselves. So, when I watched the trailer for this game, I had no idea what I was supposed to be feeling. And that's never a good thing, people. First impressions matter so much. At first, it was like trying to be taken seriously. Fly cover! Ah! Bloody move! And then these on-screen characters would die and come back, and they would try to be funny. It, it tried to have some sort of comedy around the idea of respawns, I think. Hello, old friend. And then you had a sort of Michael Bay type over the top sequence of action interspersed with scripted gameplay. It was bizarre. And in stark contrast to the Battlefield 1 trailer, which was balls to the walls crazy awesome. When you watched it, you understood exactly what it was going to be about. Crazy awesome World War 1 video game. Just comparing the like and dislike ratio between the two trailers should tell you exactly where people stand on them. Dr. Disrespect watched the trailer on his live stream, and I think what he says here kind of encapsulates the confusion most of us feel. I'm just trying to figure out if this bridge was damaged from the war or if that's the period. Like, is this an apocalyptic steampunk period? I'm just trying to figure out what the hell... Is this World War I, World War II? Is this, uh... Is this, like, a sort of, like, a futuristic civil war in the United States? Uh... Is it Cold War era? It's World War II? Okay. And again, it's never a good thing when you watch a reveal trailer and you have no idea what the game is supposed to be, what it's trying to be, or where it's supposed to be set in. That's the whole point of a trailer. So one of the reasons people are upset is because they simply don't know what they're looking at. Is this supposed to be a serious World War II game? Is this supposed to be a crazy, zany, Wolfenstein type deal? What is it? Battlefield 5 is in a conundrum now because people are tired of advanced movement in modern FPS games, so they want to go back to World War II. But DICE and EA want to have women in their World War II game. This poses a problem, as about 99.999999% of the people who fought in World War II were men. That doesn't mean you can't include women, but what DICE is doing with this trailer is taking a historical non-fiction setting and time period, and they're putting a huge emphasis on this claw woman. In the short two minute time span, she's on screen for about half of it. Naturally, it's gonna rustle some jimmies. And I'm not so much talking about historical accuracy and realism, whether this woman was actually here in whatever conflict this is supposed to be in. What I'm talking about is forcing something down the throats of your audience. Nobody likes that. And let me also say that nobody actually has a problem with women being in video games. I mean, maybe there's a few, like, actually sexist retards out there who, who say no across the board. But this is all like some big tinfoil hat conspiracy that men want to keep women out of video games. It's, it's, it's stupid. No, we don't, you fucking clowns. The problem is it needs to be done right. As with any other thing in this world, 
when you put women at the forefront of your World War II video game and on the freaking cover, and then you pioneer it as being on the right side of history, you come off as a pretentious cunt. You know that? You come off as forcing diversity, forcing your audience to accept something no matter how poorly you portray it, no matter how shitty your presentation is. So this video was originally going to be about just the reveal trailer, but I decided to update this video instead of posting it after that initial trailer so we could get more information from E3. Now, what's even more odd is the actual multiplayer trailer for Battlefield 5 that recently came out is completely different to what we had before. This is what we should have gotten in the first place. Something that just showcases the game and doesn't try to push any sort of agenda. At the same time, it shows story mode cutscenes and like a lady throwing her child into the water. So it still feels bizarre in that sense, but this gave me a much better taste in my mouth than the initial trailer did. I think it all boils down to a marketing campaign that is more confusing than it is illuminating. And with the announcement of a battle royale mode, you have to wonder if the series is going to go into territory it's really not supposed to. To be fair, Battlefield seems like the type of game that could easily adapt and make a battle royale mode because they already have the huge ass maps and tight gameplay that's necessary for that sort of thing. I'm actually interested in what they do with that, but so long as Operations returns and Battlefield 5 offers a great amount of content, what fans expect, without sacrificing core essentials, then perhaps fans, and even myself, will be happy with it. Another thing to consider is, judging from the live stream and other information we've gotten, the trailer isn't really representative of what the game will be like. Seems like this is mostly just marketing dropping the ball. The issue is you're advertising this game, and people want to know what it's about. They want to know what's important. So when the majority of the focus revolves around some steampunk claw girl, people get confused, and now they start thinking, Oh, this is gonna be a World War II video game with a very obvious, not-so-restrained agenda about equality with women. Did anybody ask for that? Did, did any hardcore Battlefield fans think about what they wanted to see most out of this trailer and say, Oh, I, I really want to see, you know, women being equally represented. No, not at all. And again, it's not so much an issue of women in video games or historical accuracy. There were women who fought, and it would be cool to see some more of that. As someone pointed out to me on Twitter, we've seen more than enough generic burly dudes in video games. But it's so forced. It lacks all subtlety. I guess I just don't understand why DICE or EA thinks they need to pander and sell out to the SJWs in political correctness. Because when you do that, you do that at the cost of your own fans. You can have these themes and messages and under the radar agendas. It just needs to be presented in a digestible way. The problem with Battlefield 5 is it appears like it wants to be a quirky, crazy spin on World War II, which I'm totally down for, but at the same time it wants to be taken seriously. And that's kind of like going to a TED talk and getting lectured by a guy in a clown suit about how to prevent suicide. It, it, it just, it hurts your brain. So you look at something like Wolfenstein, and Wolfenstein knows what it is. You know what it is, there's no confusion. I mean, this is very obviously not meant to be taken seriously, or meant to be historically accurate. Wolfenstein leans to the crazy creative side almost entirely. Realism is part of the issue, but the more important problem is forcing your audience to accept something. Forcing these two ideas, the crazy, zany style and the serious, over-the-top action, to come together and, and work symbiotically. And it just doesn't. It creates a contradiction. Go for one or the other. You want women in more diversity in your World War II game, that's totally fine. I encourage that. But why do you have to force it? Why does it need to be shoved in our faces that that's what you're doing? Ever heard of a concept called subtlety? Restraint? So the inclusion of women seems to be something that's only there for surface value. The surface value of women in a World War II game. Because it wasn't presented in an interesting way. So now, people are associating Battlefield V with women's rights and equality and equal representation and that's not the thing you should be associating with a World War II game. Someone on Reddit pointed out that the deluxe edition costs more and has a man on the cover, which is hilarious and ironic, but what's even more telling about this situation is the DICE developer's response. I knew this was going to be a fight when I pushed for female soldiers in Battlefield. 
I have a daughter and I don't want to ever have to answer her question of why can't I make a character that looks like me with because you're a girl. I fundamentally feel to my core this is the right way and I will find myself on the right side of history. So now we have a DICE developer not only confirming the force diversity, confirming the agenda, but confirming that he has his head so far up his ass, he thinks he will be remembered in the history books for this. Are you serious, dude? Stop taking yourself so seriously. It doesn't matter what franchise it is, when you start blatantly pandering to trends, beliefs, politics, or social issues when they really don't belong, it's gonna piss people off because you're not being subtle about it. And in this case, the forced agenda is making Battlefield fans upset because they don't buy these games to be told how equal women are. You think about some of the greatest female protagonists in the history of fiction writing and ask yourself why they work so well. I can tell you right now, it's not because the authors forced this character into the position they were in, it's because they work. Ripley works in the Alien movies for a variety of reasons. In the second film, she's surrounded by a bunch of burly, cocky, badass soldiers who, in the end, turn out to be a bunch of pussies, while she's the only one who really knows what they're getting into. She's believable. Ripley didn't start off as a badass, she became one because she had to. But the other aspect is Aliens wasn't just a movie about female empowerment. The, the trailer for that movie didn't shove this agenda down your throat. And yeah, it's not fair to compare one of the greatest films of all time to a two minute video game trailer. But my point here is subtlety. If you can have some modicum of subtlety and restraint in the presentation of your art, you can get your audience to accept just about anything. But this trailer doesn't. It doesn't feel authentic. That's the reason people are upset. It wouldn't feel authentic to have women in the Battlefield 1 trailer because that would have ruined the whole point, the whole focus of returning to World War 1, something we barely get to see in video games, where women were barely even involved in actual combat, less so than World War 2. Authenticity, ladies and gentlemen, it matters. I love the other part of the DICE developer's comment about how he didn't want to explain factual history to his daughter and how his daughter would even care in the first place about playing as someone who looks like her? It's like, dude, if your child hasn't learned about World War I and II, chances are she's probably too young to play this game. And second, this comment is literally saying you want to spin history in a way that can make your daughter feel included in World War I and World War II? That's important to you? Why? Is it really important to people that you're able to play a video game and have a character that looks like you? In some games, yeah, but for most of them, not really. How many people play Mario games and aren't four feet tall Italians with a kick-ass mustache and overalls? Why can't I make Mario look like me? You don't have to be physically similar to characters in any video game, book, or movie in order to make a connection with them. That's retarded. So in a nutshell, people are not so much upset with females in a World War II game, they're upset with the shitty presentation and forced diversity of the trailer. Now, on the positive side, it appears that EA and DICE will ditch the micro-gambling loot boxes in favor of buy-what-you-want cosmetics, just like Titanfall 2. And I'm all for that. And I'm not holding my breath, because EA still has a lot of trust and faith they need to rebuild with people. But that sounds like good news to me either way. In any case, those are my thoughts on the Battlefield 5 trailer and why people are upset with it. It was pretty bad, especially by Battlefield standards, and I don't have any problems with how the gameplay looks, but the forced agenda and forced diversity is certainly raising an eyebrow or two on my part. But what do you think? Did you enjoy or dislike the trailer and why? Do you plan on getting the game? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. That's all I got for today. This is the Act Man signing out. Peace!